We have reached February of 1997, and we start the year strong with Super Bomberman 5, released on the Super Famicom exclusively in Japan, thus finishing our Super Bomberman pentology. So our planet not only looks like Bomberman's head, it also has that pink moon now. And it's called Bomber World, or Planet Bomber. Finally. So this mysterious figure known as Emperor Terrorin appears. He's the ruler of a different dimension who has invaded Bomberman's universe and has freed the fiendish bombers from their prison, Bomber Prison. The fiendish bombers join his side as he creates another dimension known as Terrorin World. Wait, Louise can talk? So it's up to Bomberman and co-op partner Black Bomber to travel through Terrorin World and defeat the fiendish bombers and Terrorin. Together with the Louis, who now wear clothing and even have names. Kerui can kick bombs, Giarui kicks soft blocks, Hanarui has a pogo stick and can jump over blocks, Magikarui can line bomb, Marui is pretty chonky and can roll forward, which is basically a dash, and Nagurui can punch other players to stun them. Whoa, what's happened to Bowerman's arms and legs? Why are they skin colored? A quick look at our world map reveals that we actually go through all the worlds of the previous Super Bomberman games, with their respective enemies, tile sets, and stage gimmicks. We also see that beating a stage by killing all the enemies usually reveals multiple exits. Yes, this is a non-linear game. Each exit leads to a different level, a purple exit indicating you've already beaten that one. The game keeps track of all this with a save file, so explore different levels, different exits, and different routes to see where you end up. World 1 has a remix of our first main Bowerman theme. The bosses from the previous games aren't present here, just the world's enemies and tile sets. World 1 ends with Bomber Woof, who buries landmines everywhere. World 2 is, of course, the Dastardly Bomber spaceship, except there are no Dastardlies and the music is sort of a mix of Brain Bomber and Magnet Bomber stages from Super 2. The boss of World 2 is different depending on the route you took. It's either Dave Bomber or Gary Bomber. Or Honey and Kotetsu. That duo is sort of a secret boss that can appear in a few of the worlds. World 3 is the Bomber Nebula from Super 3 and has a remix of our other main Bomberman music. The boss is, again, dependent on the route, either Muscle Bomber or Pirate Bomber, together with his underling Subordinate Bomber. Also, Pirate Bomber is riding a Louie of his own, Warui, who has no special abilities, but interesting to see an evil Louie. World 4 goes through the different time periods of Super 4 and has, I believe, the last ever remix of Bagura's spaceship music. Enjoy it while it's there. There are three different bosses for World 4. Iron Mask Bomber, Plunder Bomber, and Baron Bombano, each riding a Louie. And the stage has these two flame redirectors that you need to pay attention to. It should also be mentioned that a lot of these boss stages have no border, so it's possible to fall off the edge if you aren't careful. World 5 is where things get a bit more crazy. It has two map screens, and consists of these disjointed sphere things that are kinda like the beginning of Star Parodier. We get a lot more interesting gimmicks here, like magnets that pull bombs back and forth and radio towers that spawn walkie-talkie enemies. A new power-up for the game is the Tracer Bomb, a special bomb that chases after enemies. We now face Terrorin. What? Wow, that was quick, wasn't it? This music is kinda creepy. He has a mech that shoots bombs, then it sort of rolls at you, and that's it. He and the fiendish bombers get away and the credits roll, except something doesn't seem right. The end. Backwards. Well, that sucks. Good thing it's only the bad ending. 
The game gives a completion percentage at this point, which might make you think the ending is dependent on how much of the game you completed. After all, you can load a file and start from any stage you've beaten to get new ones and eventually 100% the game, but the ending isn't dependent on it. It only depends on which route you took. It's entirely possible to get the good ending in your first playthrough without too much effort. So, now from a different route, we reach Terrorin again and there's different music this time. Now, after destroying his mech, we face him in a bomber duel. He can create blue squares of death, similar to what Bagura did in Super 3, and can spawn a time-stopping clock, which you can pick up before he does to get a hit in. And then his head flies off. This time, the fiendish bombers are put back into their cells, although they appear in the credits for some shenanigans for some reason. Usually involves them getting punched. With Terrorin defeated and the other villains back in prison, Planet Bomber is saved and peace is restored. The end. Completing the game 100% doesn't do much, by the way. It just unlocks a new game plus mode and gold bomber for battle mode. Speaking of which, battle mode. All the fiendish bombers are playable, except subordinate bomber, and the custom mode is back for custom power-ups and handicaps. Our victor minigame is bowling this time, and the revenge carts have a change. Now, if you throw a bomb from a revenge cart and that bomb hits an enemy, you spawn back in the arena, so even if you die, there is a way to get back in and win the fight. Our two tracks are our regular battle mode theme, as expected, and a remix of the one from Super 2, you know, Mr. BB. Altogether an interesting look back on the Super Bomberman series, if you can call it that. So despite Saturn Bomberman throwing all that previous continuity out, it's all back now. So how did Earth get this shape, and when did it become Planet Bomber, and where did that pink moon come from? Who knows. Our next game, Neo Bomberman, was released in May of 97 for the Neo Geo arcade cabinet, but not the home console. In all regions, sort of, maybe. The game's files have English and Spanish translations, but there's apparently no record of this being released outside of Japan, so... Ah, whatever, I'll just put it here. After a brief intro where Bomberman gets chased by Honey, Kotetsu, and a whole bunch of new characters, we have a tutorial. Was I calling this thing the throwing glove? I'm sorry. It's actually called... Throwing. And our death animation has us lying down as our face turns off again. So that's still a thing. The story is told to us mostly through these short stills between worlds. Bagura, but he was just a brain when last we saw him, how is he in his normal form again? Has interrupted the bomber championship and kidnapped Pretty Bomber. But he's the one who built her and she was a villain, so why is she a damsel in distress now? We haven't really had a damsel in distress since Lisa from TG16. So White Bomber and co-op buddy Black need to go save her. A quick look at the gameplay shows us this game takes a lot of beats from Super Bomberman 4. We can ride a lot of the enemies we defeat and use their special abilities. For some reason, penetration bombs are red again. This hasn't happened since Super Bomberman 1. And there are cages to bomb, giving us an assistant bomber. Those being Red, Blue, Rubber Bomber, Fake Bomber, Cat Bomber, Honey Kotetsu, Hayate Bomber, and Golden Bomber. This is another game that doesn't use any music from previous games. All original music. The bosses are kinda weird looking. Hula Hoop Dude? Goldfish? Pogo Stick Brain Thing Who Shoots Musical Notes? White and Black Bombers go through the sewers as Bagura instructs his new creation, Atomic Bomber, to stop them. At the end of World 4, Bagura has a bunch of multicolored evil bombers to fight us. We haven't really seen that since Bomberman 93. Bagura orders Atomic Bomber to kill, but he decides to yeet Bagura out of there first. Baku and Cross attack, kind of like what King Bomber did in Bomberman World. Pretty Bomber is freed, but Bagura activates his machine, sending White, Black, and Pretty to another dimension consisting of chess pieces, clocks, and 3D cubes. A reminder that it's 1997 and Bomberman has yet to make the dreaded jump to 3D. At last, we face... this thing. Kinda similar to what Bagura's brain had going on in Super 4, but it's hard to tell if he's piloting this thing or not. 
Upon defeating it, we escape Bagura's trapped dimension and fly away on one of the rideable penguin enemies. And Pretty throws us off and leaves us with a heart bomb. So that's nice. As the credits roll, the duo keeps chasing after her. The end. Battle Mode has all the assistant bombers as playable characters with special abilities, and even Atomic Bomber is here. His ability is to turn invincible, kinda like Great Bomber from Super 4. Fake Bomber turns into a soft block. Rubber Bomber turns into a... condom? That can sneak through walls. Honey can use heart bombs, just like Pretty Bomber. Hmm... Kotetsu can teleport to a random location, Hayate Bomber can place a fake bomb that fools enemies, Gold can dash, and Cat Bomber can use a different dash that stuns enemies. An odd little game, and our last arcade game for a long time to come. And that jump to 3D is soon to happen.